the more work I have, the more stressed out, the more busy I need to feel. And the less rest I can afford to take because as long as there are things to do, I have to keep running. And I talked about it in some of the previous episodes, like the busy batch of honor. I'm so busy so I can feel great. Mm -hmm. Or the policer, like the mom who's policing or people pleasing. I talked a lot about it in the last episodes because it keeps coming back <laughs> for all the moms and dads I keep working with. So the first step really is to Welcome to the Zen Superman podcast. In the episode today, I would like to talk to you about finishing your stress and drama addiction. Because if you notice that whenever life gets calmer, whenever you have opportunity to relax and be happy, be present and enjoy your life, you go automatically into the stress and busy busy and drama addiction and if there is nothing dramatic going on you either feel like oh my goodness it's boring and unconsciously you create the drama yourself or you feel like oh this is too good to be true and something wrong will definitely certainly happen in the next minute or two so let me still be ready for it if you know what i'm talking about then let's talk Hi, super mom or super dad, <laughs> Alena here, your mommy tantrum specialist and the founder of the Zen Supermom system. And me and my team have helped hundreds of moms and dads start setting healthy boundaries with calm. And this is the first parenting podcast that is not about your kids, that shows you why none of the parenting techniques helped you stop yelling at your kids and how to control your emotions from jumping out so that you can be the safe, loving parent you wish you had growing up. This is the Zen Superman podcast. Hi, Supermom or Super Dad. I'm Elena. I'm a mommy tantrum specialist and I'm the founder of the Zen Supermom system where we help busy and loving moms and dads stop yelling at their kids and set healthy boundaries with calm. And this is usually the easiest piece. (laughs) Once you understand that your uncontrollable anger jumps up at your kids whenever they are triggering your buttons and that those buttons were there way before your kids were born, when you actually understand that it's going all the way back to your childhood and you start cleaning that up, start doing the reset of all of those patterns in your mind, it's relatively fast thing to do. We do it in two to six weeks. Mom starts getting hugs like, oh, mommy, you became so much nicer. And like, ah, <laughs> it's working pretty fast. But what I noticed with our clients and also with myself, and this is what I want to use. I want to use some client stories today, but also my own personal story for you. Yeah, it's going to be juicy again. <laughs> juicy episode coming up. I started noticing that that freaking childhood trauma. (laughs) The fact that we were raised by perfectly imperfect people, of course, not going to blame them for anything, but it means that there are layers. Those are layers of things. And so often being able to even see it and recognize it without feeling like, yeah, that's the truth or that's how people are. And that's what life is. But instead, shifting the perspective and look at it like, really? Is it truth always for everybody? Or maybe is there a better way (laughs) of dealing with the situations? This awareness is the first step into actually changing it. So I want to take you through a couple of examples again so that you understand like, what is she really talking about? (laughs) That it makes sense. Do I start with my client first or with myself? I can start with myself. I'll put myself out there. You know that I always wash my dirty laundry on public. I'm not afraid to talk about it. But this is what I also, I already talked about that with my clients uh, inside the group because um, we always have a theme for a month and the theme for the month of March, 2024 is yes, I can. And how I came up with that topic was because I realized no matter how much work I did already on myself because I always do what I preach and I always do everything that I tell my clients to do. I always do it first on my uh, with myself. 
So no matter how much of that work I already did, I have done, I started noticing new layers, like deeper new <laughs> layers of trauma and beliefs I have not worked through yet. And it was an aha moment for me lately. So how it all happened, you might have noticed the Zen Supermom team is growing. If this is not the first podcast episode you've (laughs) dialed into, you might have noticed there have been a couple of previous episodes that started with Zen Supermom team is growing (laughs) because I have been extensively, rapidly hiring and building up the team because we have so much work that I realized like I can't do this all by myself I have to do what I preach I can't burn out and I cannot take care of everybody alone (laughs) I need help so again I did what I preach I asked for help I started hiring people and building a team but this is when it started to be really interesting because I grew up in a family of employees My dad was hired for his first job at the age of 23, 24, just like right after university studies. He was hired in an entry position and he spent his entire life working in that company. And from like beginner level, he got into management positions. Okay. My mom, similar thing, (laughs) even bigger, because then she changed jobs after she came back to work after taking a break to take care of me and my brother, because in Czech Republic, former Czechoslovakia, you would stay three years with a kid at home. And she had, because she had my brother like sooner than that. So I think she stayed at home when she, when he was two, she went back to work. So she stayed at home for four years. Then she came back to work. She picked up again her career. And then she even changed. She helped to co-start a company with other partners and she became chief finance officer. So both of my parents, employees for their entire life, feeling and like giving me and my brother that blueprint of study well so that you have amazing grades, so that you get to the best university so that somebody hires you for a great job so that you can stay in that job for the rest of your life. It pays your bills and you can be safe because being an employee is the safest way to (laughs) make a living. So (laughs) imagine (laughs) a first layer of this, (laughs) these beliefs I had to work through when I decided to leave my corporate job, which I followed the footsteps of my parents. I was a great student always. I got to the best universities. I got an amazing job, even abroad where I went by myself. I was working like crazy to prove myself. Eastern European girl in the Western world, technological company with no tech background. It's like all these prejudice, all these stereotypes. And how do you call that? Like all these people judging me for like, yeah, this is just another Eastern European girl who's here just to catch a rich, wealthy Western husband (laughs) and like to grab him. And then she will become mean, fat, ugly, like abusing, just gold digger. And I'm like, excuse me, (laughs) I had to deal with all of this, made it up to the top of my, the corporate ladder. Until they told me, no, you're too young to be a coach. Like, we don't care that that's your dream to become an executive coach. Like, no, you're too young. Stay, like, be happy. You're an HR, human resources leader at your age when all of the other team is 15, 20 years older than you. Like, be happy where you are. That's already great enough. Like, (laughs) and so I left. I started my own business. I, I got certified. I created my first coaching business. And that was already a huge, like, shift in my mind because from being I think even overpaid if I'm honest being paid a lot of money having all of this safety all of this status all of this recognition for my ego I dropped into being nobody into everybody questioning me what makes you think that you can be a coach you're so young you have so little life experience you just passed your certification what, why should I trust you? And having no business skills, what makes you think that you can sell yourself 
<laughs> that was the first layer to work through 10 years ago. <laughs> but now when I fast forward, like everything that I had to go through to come to get here, I thought I had it all figured out. I thought like, yeah, I've been a business, like on my own freelancer. I've, I've, I've learned, I got all the skills. And now I realized, well, there's shoot another layer I have to work through because what makes me think that I could be a good team leader? What makes me think that it's okay to take responsibility for other people's lives and, and putting them on my mission? Because the autopilot, again, the blueprint that I had was seeing my mom and seeing also her employees, her team, because she was like, there were some events when we met them and uh, they talked very highly of her, but also jokingly and not so jokingly, I know that my mom was really bossy, very, she could be very brutal, <laughs> even in her employees. She had the classic, you know, the authority and that respect has to be earned. And she was very strict. It was that old management style, you know, 30 years ago. And especially because she was a woman and she had to prove herself. I feel now looking back at it and having some retrospect and having a little more life experience as well. I feel like she had to, she felt she had to prove herself. So she was even more tough than guys. She had to, like, she had balls, <laughs> but in a negative way as well, yeah? She had lots of this masculine, pushy, um, you know, energy. And I was scared that I had the same. Because for me, that was the only management style that I saw at home. And that was the only way how I knew how to succeed as a woman. And sometimes I was given that feedback, even in the corporate world, that I'm not only too direct and too straight, <laughs> like, no, I'm not a politician. Um, I don't know how to say things without not saying them and manipulating, playing it like a chess game, you know, the corporate politics. I hated it. I was like, Whoa. I was like a bulldozer. <laughs> I told people and I thought it was justified and it was right because that's exactly what my mom would have done. And when I knew that it didn't always work and it did close quite a lot of doors for me and it's, I destroyed a lot of relationships because of that, I was scared. Because now that I came, like again, 10 years later, <laughs> I was sitting here at my desk thinking like, okay, so I found something that helps heal childhood trauma. I found something that I feel all of the moms in this world, they should know about and somebody should teach them because that's the way how to stop this unnecessary pain that everybody, every single person, like 99.9% .9 of the people in this world, they feel like I'm not good enough. And if only I could teach and heal all the moms in this world, it would be a different place. <laughs> Once we feel we are good enough that there is no childhood trauma, there is no anxiety and no low confidence and insecurities, this world would be a different place. But I can't do it on my own. And I can't go and hire and build a team because what if I turn out being my mom again? What if I will be too bossy? What if I will be too aggressive? What if I get too stressed out because I have no other blueprint on how to do it otherwise? And so I had, I had to work through all of this, <laughs> all of these layers, because then it's like a pendulum swings, right? Once I felt, I was like, okay, I don't want to be too aggressive and too like pushy and strict and just bulldozing over people and focusing only on the task, getting things done while forgetting about who they are and like taking care about them, having empathy for them as human beings. Once that I take that pendulum off, then I don't also want to become a people pleaser because this was my mom. She was like Jekyll and Hyde at the same time Then she was also a people pleaser, self-sacrificing herself for us as a family and like letting people 
do or say things to her and always saying yes, never saying no because she would feel guilty and still, even though how much she achieved, she never felt quite good enough. It's like a pendulum, right? And as a leader of a team, if you have a vision, if you want to put people on, on, <laughs> on your train, on your vision, you need different set of skills. And I never, I never grew up knowing how that works, how to do that. Want to know why those gentle parenting techniques are not working for you? Where is that uncontrollable anger that you feel with your kids? Where is it coming from? Then download this mini book. I prepared it for you. Busy, loving, but yelling super mom or super dad. Because no, it's not about learning more parenting techniques. It's not about doing classic talk therapy. It's not about more self-care time so that you can de-stress. No, there's something deeper going on. It's not even about your kids. So I compiled this mini book out of my most successful one hour long live training that I'm doing. I compressed it in just a few pages so that you can learn this, these two keys that you need to be able to stay calm with your kids, no matter how stressed you are, no matter how much they are pushing your boundaries, so that you know what it's going to take for you to stay calm and set healthy boundaries without yelling. Want to know how? Get that mini book now. So this is the additional, like deeper layer that I haven't even got to through my journey because this was new for me so this is where I stop my story and I turn the table again to you and I ask I want to ask you what blueprints did you get from your parents that are creating right now anxieties in you because either you're just realizing now that maybe that's what's stopping you <laughs> from progressing moving on with your own life you keep reliving the patterns to life of your parents or maybe if you already realize well this is the next level of growth that is needed for me to move on you still feel stuck because analytically logically your brain gets it like yeah that's i'm different than my parents i don't have to repeat it i want to do it better but how <laughs> how and having that fear of not going back to the old ways. Mm -hmm. So, what would change for you if you got aware of that blueprint and if you could rewire it? If you could learn how to navigate, how to self-soothe and how to start walking on your own path? that maybe non, nobody in your family has walked before. And still feeling at peace, not with cocky, aggressive overconfidence, but being at peace, knowing that if you're driven by your mission, by positive good intentions, not because your ego is asking to prove that you're worth it, but because there's a deeper mission, because there's, a, there's some meaning, there's some purpose in it, what if you could take that as the energy to start blazing your own trail and maybe creating a path that nobody in your family has created for themselves and knowing that they will be, there will be some voices left and right trying to persuade you not to, <laughs> trying to talk you out of it, trying to blame you or trying to say, why do you blame us? Like we did the best we could. We are not here to blame anybody. <laughs> And not everybody will explain or will understand if you're trying to explain. But what if you started walking on your own path? Because this is the inspiration that I want you to get out of this podcast episode today. You do not have to relive the blueprint of your parents. And yes, you can change that automated mechanism that will always try to steer you there. Like another one that I had was, the more work I have, the more stressed out, the more busy I need to feel. And the less rest I can afford to take because as long as there are things to do, I have to keep running. 
And I talked about it in some of the previous episodes, like the busy batch of honor. I'm so busy so I can feel great. Mm -hmm. Or the policer, like the mom who's policing or people pleasing. I talked a lot about it in the last episodes because it keeps coming back <laughs> for all the moms and dads I keep working with. So the first step really is to catch it. Notice. That if you're getting into a similar situation as your parents went through. And what they were struggling with. That you have a choice. Having a full to-do list for me today doesn't equal that I need to feel stressed or under pressure. Having a team of people working with me right now doesn't mean that I'm going to turn into a bossy I don't want to use bad words. <laughs> Bossy monster. <laughs> Let me put it this way. It doesn't have to mean that. I am growing <laughs> my own muscles <laughs> as a leader. I am walk walking on my own path. What would that look like for you if you did the same? What are the patterns? Emotional reactions that just come up like autopilot without you even thinking about it that you now start noticing that maybe you have outgrown that you don't need anymore that those were the ways how your parents used to deal with stressful situations and now you can choose to start learning a new way that will be working for you yeah. As long as those patterns are working for you, like keep them, of course. Like, thank you, parents. You taught us a lot of great stuff. Keep that. But what are those ways that are not working for you anymore? That you have outgrown, that do not fit your life, that do not fit what you want to get out of it, that do not fit with what kind of parent would you want to be, that do not fit with what you want your kids to grow up to be one day. You want them to be, you want to be their role model. So what is it? What are the blueprints that you want them to learn from you? Even by observing you and your energy and your reactions. How you react under pressure. How you react when there's a new opportunity presenting itself. Do you shrink? Do you start playing small? Or do you let your vision, not your ego, but your purpose, your vision drive you and show your kids like you're unstoppable. If it's your passion and if it's your pure intention guiding you, you're unstoppable. Isn't that what you want your kids to grow up believing? And so isn't it the time that you start living <laughs> and leading them by example? So this is what I wanted to share with you today. And I didn't even come to the example of my client. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it in another podcast episode <laughs> with people pleasers. We will focus on them next. Let me know what this little short episode gave you. I would really love to hear from you. What patterns are you stopping? And in what ways do you realize that maybe the time has come for you to start creating a new blueprint in your mind and being you free from whatever baggage you got from your family and bless them without getting angry at anybody all things happen for a reason let's find the good reason in it and this might be it sending you a big hug super dad or super mom let me know what you got out of this and stay tuned for the next episode. And yeah, please. One more thing. My podcast wizard. <laughs> I love her. And she keeps telling me to ask you to subscribe. Hit the button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Because somehow it helps us to be more visible for other people who are not subscribers yet. So please, if you can do that, I would appreciate it. <laughs> and now I'm sending you off. Go rock your life unapologetically and let me know how that's going for you. Bye.